Hello, on this video I'm going to show you how to fit the uh, continuous ink system to the business ink jet. Let's just check, it's the 1200. So this one uses the compatible uh, 10 and 11, number 10 and number 11 ink cartridges. So it does fit probably around 18 other machines. So although the machines may look completely different, they've always got a door. Uh, in this area or at the bottom. So 99% of the fit method, uh, the fundamental fit method, is the same. The only bit that tends to differ uh, is the door catch area which I shall cover later on in the video. So when the continuous ink system arrives it will have an elastic band around the black line and you will notice that the black line is empty. So basically the cartridge is filled at the factory uh, and it's, it's been pinched in this area here to stop the ink back flowing down the cartridge. So don't worry about the elastic band. The first thing you need to do is to remove this. So depending on how long it's been in storage and how long the band's been on, sometimes basically it can be crimped a little, but don't worry about that. Just manipulate it uh, a bit with your fingers, just squeeze it back into shape, but most of the time it's perfectly fine. So we're gonna remove the elastic bands from the system all of them. There we are. So you'll notice here on the side there is a little tube roller. Most of the customers install the system and forget to put the tube roller in the up position. If you don't have it in the up position, ink will not flow down this line into the cartridge and the cartridge will run dry. So before we do this, what we need to do is uh, we need to do some pre-install pre checks. So with these HP systems, they're normally the ink lines are normally pretty full, but with some of the others you can get air in them. So what we need to do is we need to prime the system. So what we're going to do is I've put the small sharp blue needle onto the syringe and I'm going to put it straight through the plug. So you need to make sure that the needle doesn't touch the ink inside. So we're going to put it through at an angle and as soon as you see it come through, stop. And then we're going to draw back and we're going to remove 10 ml of air. Pull the syringe out and expel the air and then repeat the process again like so. Pull it out, expel the air and then this time on the last time whoops, so you'll see what I'm going to do. I'm going to expel, I'm going to separate the syringe, well the plunger of the syringe from it and you'll probably hear a little a little gush. Again, you need to make sure this is in the up position or it won't work. So for the video, I did forget to put that up so the ink hasn't travelled down the line. So I will have to repeat the process. So again, just make sure that roll is in the up position. So I'll do it quite quickly this time. So one, remove it, expel the air. Two, Remove it, expel the air, and then just make sure that's on firmly. And then on the third time, pull the plunger out. There we are. And I would leave it in that position for about 15 seconds. So what that's actually done is it will just remove any excess air that is in the ink lines. So you will need to repeat that process for any other colour that you've got more than about four inches of air in the line. So these are your refill holes. So basically to refill the system you just take the large plug out and you can either pour the ink in or use a syringe to do that. These four small flat plugs, this is the air balance chamber. So this helps control the amount of ink that is pumped down the line to the cartridge. So sometimes during transit it's possible for the inner, inner air balance chamber to have more ink in it than the external chamber. So we do need to address this before we install the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the little plug out and the large plug out and then this time within your accessory pack there is a long a long needle about four inches long. So we're going to use this this time. So we're going to draw out about six mil of ink from the inner chamber. Doesn't really matter, six to eight mil. And then we're going to transfer it to the outer chamber just like so and that's it so the, the levels 
of the two of them will be the same. So that bit's installed, so you will need to repeat that process where you can see the, the ink level on the inner chamber is higher than the outer chamber. So I'm just going to pop the plugs, plugs back in for now while we continue to install the system. So I'm going to open the drawer. So I did say earlier that it does, it does fit quite a lot of machines and there does tend to be uh, a slight bit of difference between them. The majority of the fit method is the same. But the bit that's different tends to be the printer lid sensor. When the door is open, the printer knows it's open and it will refuse to print. So it's normally around the door hatch area. There is normally a little, there's a catch on this one here. Uh, there's normally a catch or a button or a reset switch. But basically when this, when this lever here goes into there, it tells the printer that the lid is shut, which is just this point here. So there are various methods to, to uh, bypassing this. I mean on this particular machine because it, it's an old one the gaps are basically, there's, there's some big gaps so we could actually install it and shut the door as well and the tubes won't trap and it won't stop the ink line. On some of, some of the newer models basically it is a bit more of a tighter fit uh, and you will need to find the bypass switch and basically it should be pressed in. So during the installation we do actually remove these small flat plugs so these are quite useful because they can they can be inserted directly into the hole in that position or, or various other plugs that are in the pack and that will bypass the sensor. So I mean once it's installed sometimes you, you'll only get it that far that far and you can just put a piece of tape over there or over the side that way the lid's not open but you do need to find the bypass sensor which is normally in this area here. So we're now going to insert the cartridges into the machine. So we're going to start with the with the black one. So we're just going to push that down. That one's installed, and then the cyan. Do make sure you uh, you put them in the uh, right nozzles. So there are some uh, alignment grooves that you should follow just to pop them in. Uh, and then the cyan one and the magenta one, should I say? That one's in, and then the last one is the yellow. Just like that. So pop that down. So that bit's installed now. All four cartridges are installed. So I do know this machine will accept uh, a large black as well, but for the purposes of the continuous ink system, it just uses the narrow cartridges. So again, we need to make sure that this roller on the side is in the up position, uh, and then there's just a couple more things we need to do. So within your accessory pack there are some air filters, anything else that's left in the bag are spares. So when you look at the air filters itself, it's like a spin child spinning top. It has a small fat end uh, and then a, a narrow pointed end. So they should be inserted into these holes with the fat end down. So remove the small, the small plugs, two, three, and then we're going to install the air filters just like that. So again, it's, it's quite a long cable this is, so uh, you could actually, if you haven't got room at the side of your printer, the ink system will actually fit around the back. But the most important thing is that these ink systems, they must be sat on the same level as the base of the printer. If it's raised more than about 25 mil, gravity can take place. Uh, and ink will, will continue to go down the line and flood your printer. So it must be sat at the same level as the base of the printer. So we're going to shut this. We, we can, on this model, we can actually shut the door uh, and it won't trap the cables at all in any way. So, so some other models, the door will only partially shut, probably to about there, and the uh, ink line will exit. So if, if it hasn't bypassed the lid sensor, use the spare plug locate the lid sensor and insert the plug or something similar. So as I said with this one, we probably still can get it all the way closed. So I'm going to put this one at the top. There we are. So it's actually shut on this model, but you might not be able to on all the models that it fits. It does fit around 25 different printers. So with in installation is now finished. So we can just sit the continuous ink system at the side of the printer. So 
has been removed from the black cartridge. You will notice once you've done a few head cleans and a couple of prints, the black ink will just come straight down the line and uh, fill the cartridge, well, keep the cartridge topped up. So that's how you install the HP compatible 10 and 11 continuous ink system from City Ink Express. Thank you.